Hi there, Junior Rangers. Welcome back to another art demonstration. Today, what we're going to be focusing on are majestic elephants, as I believe you've been learning about them this week. So what you'll need for this project will be an A4 white piece of paper, a paintbrush, maybe some water, um, and I've got acrylic inks with me today. You can use anything that you've got on hand at home, paint or even pencil crowns if you if you want to do it that way. I just had these on hand, so I'm going to use these. They, these are particularly messy, and if they get onto clothes, they will not come out. So if you are using messy materials, always prepare your area, perhaps with a piece of newspaper, and do it outside if you can. All right, so why don't you go and get what you need, and I will see you back here in a couple of minutes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these inks straight from the containers. Um, but if you do have a small container to decant your paint or ink into, perhaps that would be a good idea. So what we are aiming for on this white piece of paper is to do a color gradient. So almost, we're going to be creating a sunset of sorts. If I have it this way, you'll see. So it goes from red, into yellow and in between will mix together to form some sort of orange. So you can use whatever sunset colors you decide, but I'm gonna go with pink and yellow for now. All right, so I'm gonna paint a bit of water first and then add my ink. You can see this acrylic ink spreads very nicely. Just acrylic drawing ink and it's a student um, art material. So if you do get your hands on this, it is quite nice to use in your artworks. You can see the more water I add, the thinner the color will be. So it'll be a bit lighter. You can play around with this when you're doing your artwork because you might want to use less or more in certain areas. You can decide. You are the artist in charge of this project. So you can see with using more water, it spreads around quite nicely. I'm going to start with, from the other side at similar time. Let's see, my paintbrush is a bit dirty. It's okay because we are going to be mixing colors slightly. I always say don't double dip your paintbrush into different colors, otherwise, you end up making perhaps the yellow turn into an orange. So just be a bit aware of that when you are dipping your paintbrush into the second color. Don't want to be doing it with a dirty paintbrush. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just spreading this out a bit so that this color will eventually meet in the middle. Okay, so again, using water from either side, I don't want to use too much ink here because I want that color to be mixed into each other and if I use a lot of ink that color tends to well the dominant color will take over and we won't see much of the yellow or the orange so this will be a little bit of a work in progress you might find you have to add color slowly and see what starts evolving Remember, you're trying to make a sunset, and no sunset will look exactly the same as another one. So think about what your sunset would look like, remembering that each different art material that you use will create a slightly different effect. If you're using watercolor paints, for instance, that will look totally different to acrylic inks. And likewise, um, pencil crayons, if you want to do a gradient and mix your colors over each other, would look very different from paints. So there you go, you can see what my background of this artwork is gonna look like. I will have to put this aside for a little while to let it dry completely before the next step of the project. So go and put it somewhere where it isn't likely to blow away, perhaps somewhere in a light sunny area. And once that's done, you can complete the second part of this artwork. All right, Junior Rangers, now that we've waited for our paper to dry completely, we've got our gradient sunset on our 
what was our A4 piece of white paper. Now, I have mentioned this before, but I always like to use reference pictures of what I'm trying to draw in my artwork. I think this just gives us a better idea of what we're aiming towards. Again, that your picture does not have to look exactly the same as the photograph, and it definitely won't, but it's just to inspire us a little bit and keep us on the right track. So what we're going to need for this part of the project is a permanent marker pen and maybe a fine liner pen. You can start with pencil. Um, I'm going to go straight into pen to save time. All right, so I'm going to move this to the side. Before I start, I must always think and plan where exactly I would like my artwork to feature on the page. So I'm going to just sort of trace out with my finger, figuring out how big I want my elephant to be. Now I know this is the sunset, but I'm going to not use this as the bottom ground point uh, of the picture. I'm actually going to place my elephant slightly above, so he is floating in the sunset slightly. All right. So now I'm going to take my pen, after I've sort of figured out how big I want to draw my elephant, I'm going to do the outlines in this pen. Remember to look carefully at the shapes of the elephant that you're drawing. Each shape fits into another and that will give you certain clues on what to draw next. So I wouldn't start drawing an ear and then go and draw the tail. I drew the ear. Now I'm looking at how that fits into the next part of the elephant, which is the head. And then the tusk and so on. Now elephants are also extremely wrinkly characters. <laughs> they are known as being very wise and thoughtful creatures, wise old elephants. Um, so maybe look carefully at the wrinkles and see how you can include that in your elephant design. Okay, and the trunks are that lovely long shape with lots of wrinkles going across. So I'm going to complete the outline first and then I'll come back and do that inside detail next. Seeing what fits in next, I'll do his other task. And then I might include another side bit of his ear. I did this ear a little bit high. I think I'd actually like to add a little bit more. So I'm going to add that in now. Luckily, later with all those wrinkles if you do make a mistake we can incorporate those lines into the artwork at a later stage all right now i've got the head of the elephant i'm going to start looking at how his back would be um, shaped joined onto that space so i'll look at the line work it goes up in a hump again i'm still just drawing the outlines of my elephant and take time to stop and reflect of, on your shapes and patterns if you are not happy with the way it's going. I chose to come back to this side as I want to just think about how this leg is going to be a little bit bigger because it's um, closer to us than these back legs would be on, in the picture. All right, so I'm going to look carefully at how the toes of this elephant also are shaped and what shapes the legs take as they are going up again towards the body. Okay, I'm going to close that shape with the toes. Now you can see his toenails. And now I'm going to look carefully at how the belly goes back and he's almost got a leg that's coming walking so I will try to include that shape in my picture so elephants are super majestic beasts the biggest 
peaceful giants in the jungle. I mean, in the jungle, in the, in the wild park, um, and in nature. So take your time when drawing this gorgeous creature and just reflect on how just incredible these creatures are. All right, so now I've got my outlines. You can see I've made a couple of little errors. That back leg looks a little bit um, chunky, but elephants are enormous creatures. So we will just go with the flow with this artwork. All right, so now I can start adding my details, like maybe the elephant's eye, um, the details in his trunk that I mentioned earlier. You may want to use different kinds of lines. So we can curve our lines to show that that elephant's trunk is three-dimensional. If you use curved lines, it shows that that shape is rounded. So it gives us the idea of this elephant being not a flat shape, but a rounded shape. Okay, and then you can decide how far those go up. Those wrinkles and cracks, perhaps this elephant has had a bath in the mud, and he is full of drying clay and wrinkles. All right, now that mistake I made with the ear, I want to incorporate that into my patterns. So I might just make more wrinkles going this way. By doing lines going in different directions, again, by thickening some of the lines, you'll see that they appear to be closer to the person looking at the picture than the thinner lines, which feel like they're further away. So you can play with those, the thicknesses of your lines, just by going over lines again, if you want to make them stand out more. And you can do this two or three times, thinking of the contrast of the different line weight or thickness. You see how the, this line is very thick and those lines next to it are thin, really starts to make quite a, a dramatic contrast. Okay, this tusk would probably come out closer to the viewer too, so I want to make that thick. And maybe I'll extend it a slightly thicker line on this trunk as well. I'm not going to make it as thick as that tusk because I want it to appear as if it's just behind the tusk. But now you can see it starts to stand out a bit more than the rest of the elephant. So you can have fun doing different textures and line work. Maybe you can do some dashed lines some scribbly lines. Think about different patterns you can make using your lines on your elephants. Now oh, it looks like my elephant has a bit of a, a headache, so I'm going to give him a couple more wrinkly lines so that that becomes part of the pattern. Perhaps underneath some of these wrinkles, I could use curved lines again, going downward, and that will just give a little bit of a hint of those wrinkles in the truck be, uh, in the trunk being curved. I mean, and 3D coming out in waves. If you change the direction of your curved lines, you can almost create the illusion that it goes in and out, in and out. So if those ones went that way, that way, then the next line could go this way. And I'll alternate. And you can see how that starts to create a different kind of effect. All right, Junior Rangers, now what I'm going to think about is are the shadows that might be on my elephant's body. Okay, if this ear is sticking out, it might cast a shadow that falls underneath, underneath it onto the body there. So I'm just going to use a bit of a dotted line to show where my shadow might exist. Okay, and the reason for that is I'm going to actually use my, my marker pen to color that in later. Um, so not all of my elephant is going to be in pattern. Perhaps some of this leg might also be in shadow. And 
yeah, the back legs I'm definitely going to leave in shadow. All right, so now I'll take my slightly thicker pen to save some time and I'm going to carefully go around the outline, not drawing out of the lines as such, going very slowly so that I don't cover any of my lovely drawing and just thinking carefully about where that shadow line would be. All right, once I've done the outline, then you'll see it's a lot easier to color in the inside sh shape and it's less likely to mess. So I always encourage children to draw an outline first and then fill in that middle color. Are following along and I can't wait to see what kind of elephants you produce. Junior Rangers, another way you could do this project is by um, just using the outside shape of your elephant and colouring in everything with a black pen and creating a silhouette. So you have what appears to be like an elephant and, the, and behind him the sunset. So for instance, something like this. If I drew a tree in the background and just wanted to draw almost like an acacia tree in, in nature, you might see the branches getting thinner as they go towards the edge of the tree branches. So I'm just drawing all the outlines. And then I'm going to color in that silhouette. So totally up to you what you draw. If you want to include some details in your elephant or if you want to just focus on the silhouette of your majestic Ellie and colour in with a permanent marker. As you can see, it might be quite nice to have a combination of the two and then you can decide later to colour in everything as a silhouette if it doesn't work out. Art's often an evolving process, so you might do something and then realize that you really don't like what you've just done. But the great thing about art is that it's never a final point. You can learn from your mistakes or use them as creative opportunities to do something different. So junior artist, now that you can see the um, turtle silhouette of the tree versus the elephant that's got a bit of detail, you can decide what you want to do with your artwork. Remember, you can always vary the thicknesses of your pens. Um, if you do make different kinds of lines, the drawing does have a different kind of effect than if it is just all in very thick lines or all in very thin lines. So really try hard to vary what you're doing in terms of the line weight, how thick or thin the lines are. All right, so back to my elephant. I haven't quite finished doing all my patterns inside my elephant, so I'm going to go and do that now. I hope you are doing a bit of thinking and planning about what you want to do in your majestic Ellie. Alright, so I might come back to the rest of my elephant's body later. I'm going to draw a little horizon line here so it gives my elephant a bit of ground to walk on. And perhaps in the far background I could make a small tree. This will give the illusion that there is depth in my artwork. So depth is, uh, alludes to the picture going back into the distance. So if you can see things that are smaller to other things in the front, it also gives you that illusion of space. So I'm going to color that in with my permanent marker once again. All the shapes that 
I can just to save a bit of time. Oops, as you can see, the thicker cookie or thicker marker only does thick lines. So if you do want to do those thinner lines, you might have to use a uh, different pen. All right. Another thing I could include perhaps is uh, probably uh, some birds in the background. I don't love doing birds like that. I like to add a few more details. I don't like to just make the M birds. So think about what details you can add in yours to make them appear as if they are actually slightly three-dimensional. All right, I'm going to do a bit of work on the patterns inside my elephant. Um, and I will then think about things that I could do in the foreground, perhaps adding some grasses, or maybe a little, a small five, like an elephant shrew could be part of the picture. It's totally up to you. You can be as inventive and creative and imaginative as you would like to be. So we're going to speed this portion up so you can just see how to do patterns if you would like to. Don't forget you can also turn your page round to help you get to those difficult to reach places and it will help you fine tune your lines. All right, here we go. All right, Junior Rangers, now remember you may want to include something we did last week um, and do some cross hatching, which is the line work that goes in a different direction. This gives you a kind of element of shading. So you'll see the shadows appearing if you do a little bit of um, pen work from a different direction. If you just leave it singularly, it, it looks lighter. Okay, the more layers of line that you do over in different directions, the darker the shadow will become. Okay, if you obviously color in the picture completely, you'll get a flat black look, but this gives a little bit of an element of light and darkness in that shadow. Remember to take your time and do it slowly. This hatching is not easy to do really quickly. So you might have to take your time and just do it slowly and carefully. All right, Junior Rangers, that's it from me. I can't wait to see what you guys produce next time um, when you upload these ones. But hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson and your majestic elephants look amazing, which I'm sure they will. Have fun and I will hopefully see you next week.